signs. All of those are symptoms of poverty. And so if you want to change the condition of how people express uh, their suffering, uh, then you've got to change the underlying cause. And again, if people don't have an opportunity to choose uh, from uh, uh, a way to be self-sufficient, I mean, certainly some people are going to want to do crime because it's, they perceive it as easier. Uh, but those people, which is the overwhelming majority, that would like to work and would like to be self-sufficient, would like to be involved in the mainstream of community life, if there's no opportunity for that, um, then I don't see any change. What, what change can there be? Are we talking about um, uh, um, encouraging people through, let's just say, gang intervention? We're going to encourage people to be peaceful so that you and I can be uh, safer and feel greater at ease? I think that we have to start with those people that are most vocal, most active in expressing whatever their pain is as a result of whatever condition they live in and stop judging them as being simply criminals, simply being gang members, simply being poor people. Stephen Hawking is one of the greatest minds on this earth. He's given us unparalleled gifts. He did it with his brain. He can't move his arms or legs. He can barely move his, his mouth and he's used technology to communicate with the world and through that technology he's, he's given us his gifts. How can we consider him poor? Poor guy in the wheelchair. Hell no, he's got, he's rich, rich with potential. As long as he's breathing, as long as any of our people are breathing, they're rich with potential, I can't classify them as poor people. Certainly they don't have enough money. Everybody knows that. But if we put all of the other barriers in their way, you know, a $500 ticket for crossing the street at the wrong place that turns into a warrant or whatever, if we, if we don't give them supplies in schools and we expect them to learn, we see them walking to school eating orange soda pop and hot Cheetos and we expect them to behave normally sitting in a classroom and now they've got the jitters so we diagnose them as being problem students and we analyze them and we prescribe psychotropic drugs to them so now they're special ed kids. This is, these are all the result of poor public policy in Watts that doesn't offer enough choices to people. Choice, the power of choice is a great equalizer between the people that have the least and the people that have the most. If we have the choice of which way we want to turn in the morning, if we want to go to a food for less or we want to go to a Trader Joe, that's a, that's a choice we need. Or if we don't want to go to either one of those and we want to go to the neighborhood growing grounds where people have stuff that they're pulling out of the ground to sell to you, yeah. that's what we need, choices and alternatives. From people you talk to in the community, what would, can you generalize, uh, characterize what their sort of main fears of the development are as well as, we've talked about the displacement issue, but besides the displacement, what, what are you hearing are the fears as well as the hopes? Well, um, let me just say what my fear is, again. Um, my fear is that if, if people were displaced by this project years before it was formally announced, then my fear is that right now in Nickerson Gardens and Imperial Courts, that process may be underway. If it's underway, then that's, that's my base fear. My hope is that it's not happening, then that we rebuild the community with vibrant, viable housing um, that, does, that sees people that have been subjected to and lived in poverty as the primary beneficiaries of that development, the primary beneficiaries. And then the second and third uh, tier beneficiaries are those people that have a choice about where they live, but certainly public housing is the most affordable housing in our uh, nation. We don't get to uh, the next level down. This is it. The next level down from this is going to live with a neighbor or being homeless. That's my understanding. I might be wrong. I don't mean to insult anyone that lives in public housing, but that's my understanding. So the, uh, the displacement issue is the key. That's my core concern. Could you say that the displacement issue is? The displacement issue is my core concern. Um, I need to add 
that there's been a lot of uh, rumor mill around the idea that people were being um, uh, moved out of Watts and into places like Lancaster, San Bernardino, the Inland Empire. I know some people that as a matter of a court condition, a judge said that if you want to avoid it in being in jail, then you move out by a certain date. Uh, we don't care where you move, but just get out of LA. And um, I know some people that moved to Lancaster and then caught the train at four o'clock in the morning to come back into LA for an eight dollar an hour job. That's a travesty condition. Now, whether that's rampant, whether that happened a lot, I have no idea. But that's my core concern. The second, the second concern is that it be sustainable. You can go right down the street to other projects, uh, you know, that the city has built. Rodia Homes is one, uh, the beautiful shopping center that is in, that needs a lot of repairs. You know, those were city projects that were beautiful when they were built, but the sustainability factor wasn't there. And if you go to Nickerson Gardens, that's a housing authority project. Go to Imperial Courts, housing authority project. Don't go there, just go to Jordan Downs and look at it, it's a housing authority project. How well have they been maintained? How well does this development process promise to sustain what they build in the quality and condition that they build it in? Good. You know, a question occurred to me that, I sp that has come up with other interviews, and it's regarding security issues. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily the cameras, because that's been a pretty controversial, but the question of whether it's good or a bad idea to have uh, Jordan be a gated community, to cut down, uh, this is gated, and I understand people are generally satisfied with it, but what are your thoughts on gating? Um, once again, this is a project within uh, a community of special interest. Um, Watts is a place that's known around the world primarily for two things, one being the revolt, the second being the towers, the Watts Towers. Um, as a community of intense interest, um, I think that it deserves to be viewed as a, a total community rather than a, a community with islands. And one, if I've already expressed to you in this interview that I'm concerned about uh, the people living here being perceived as being on an island of privilege, um, then what happens if you gate it? Well, then you're either containing what's inside of it or you're suppressing what's outside of it. And I think that that's a dangerous intervention. I think that what would be a far, far better solution would be to make sure that the community is fully engaged, fully aware of what the next term plans are. And to employ and to utilize and, and have people involved that live here in every aspect of this development that they can be so that they become owners of it rather than recipients of the product. You know, I just want to say a couple things about my role here. Um, I've been asked to be interviewed uh, by the housing authorities, uh, um, a photographer, um, but I don't represent the people of Watts. I represent the Watts Labor Community Action Committee. We have 2,000 tenants nearby. We have 230 employees and we provide services to all of the people of Watts where they need it, when they need it, as much as we can. Um, having said that, I don't want there to be a perception that I speak on behalf of anyone other than WLCAC number one, because far too often self-appointed leaders and representatives claim to be, you know, uh, representing the community and the community hasn't asked them to do squat, number one. Number two, I think that the efforts of the Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Laura Richardson, uh, and Linda Sanchez, as well as the leadership of the Housing Authority, uh, deserve to be, I, I sincerely think they deserve to be applauded for the effort, because at least they say they're, they're saying the right things and appear to be doing the best that can be done in what is an almost impossible situation. Uh, with the global financial crisis and the meltdown of resources locally and regionally, um, I think for this to continue moving forward uh, is a real, uh, uh, a real bright star in the, in the future of Watts. Um, I think that if somebody actually listened to what I've said here uh, objectively um, 
and put aside whatever they can perceive as my passion or whatever degree of misinformation might compel me. Uh, I think that there's some things that I've said that would be invaluable to not only the people of Watts, but to the people that uh, run the agencies and oversee the services that are brought into Watts as well. Super.